Last round. But the other part of here is the stability work. So being able to engage all of our muscles in order to keep us uninjured and safe, not only in the gym, but outside of the gym. So when we look at uh, active rest periods, there's a couple of things we can do with it. Let's say for instance, we've got our four sets here and we've got an active rest, I'll call it an AR. So our active rest period could consist of something, if we were just looking for calorie burn, it'd be simply a 100 metre walk, uh, like a, a walk of our outdoor track. Uh, that would assist in some calorie burn. So if we've got you know, 20 sets, 30 sets a week on one body part, and then you know, we're hitting half a dozen of those, we're gonna add up to quite a few kilometers of extra walking a week just by going through our normal workout sessions. So we might hit two Ks extra movement over the course of a session. So if you're on someone who's on a cutting diet or someone who's just looking to shed some extra kilos, it's a sneaky way of getting some cardio in without disrupting your ability to do your weight training. I wouldn't suggest running it because if you run it, then when you come back to do this, you're gonna have a negative effect on how much you can move. The other thing I like to do, and it has more of a, a potentially, I, I think, a, a slightly better benefit other than just burning calories, is a single leg stability drill. So one of my favorite ones would be a three-way leg reach. So we've got an active rest drill that incorporates a three-way leg reach. So that's essentially standing on one foot, moving your leg as far forward as you can, as far to the side as you can, as far to the rear as you can, without allowing it to touch the ground and without allowing the leg that you're standing on that need to dip in hard. So your glute on that leg that's standing on the ground needs to be very active, creates stability through the knee and ankle junction and that requires quite a bit of not only balance and coordination but it also has a lot of um, extra muscle recruitment going on that is I guess somewhat instinctual. So if for instance, you step off a step or you uh, have to bend over quickly or there's an undulation in a ground or something like that, then you're better prepared for things like that that are not necessarily you know, prone to happening in the gym, but it could be anywhere. So like a yeah, it's almost like prehabilitation, I guess. So that any time we are in those situations, we're less likely to give ourselves an injury that's gonna hold us up from our progression in the gym. So. It's another good way too of making sure that people are paying attention. You know, we get a whole bunch of people that have got foot problems or, um, you know, pronated feet, et cetera, et cetera, collapsed arches, whatever the case may be, and or they've had previous knee, ankle, hip injuries that cause them to have a sort of dysfunctional movement. Well, this gives us an opportunity to try and train everything into the right position uh, at least a few times a week. It's almost like, physio corrective exercise without there being a necessarily a correction that's required. Put it this way, it doesn't do you any harm to do it. So we make use of it and it will be a benefit to some people.